Hungarian folk tales. The diligent girl and the lazy girl. Once upon a time, there lived an old man and an old woman, and each had a daughter from their previous marriage. The old woman was always angry with her husband's daughter and did not like her the slightest bit. Things went from bad to worse until one day the old woman chased the girl away from home saying that she should seek work with a rich family. The girl walked and walked and was walking past a pear tree when the tree spoke to her. Where are you going? I'm going to find a job as a servant with a rich family, the young girl replied. Come here and rid me of my dry branches and I will do you a good deed in return. Then the young girl walked on her way until she passed a grapevine and the vine spoke to her. Come here and hoe around my roots and I will do you a good deal in return. Then the young girl walked on her way until she passed a crumbling oven. Please come here and make me tidy and clean and I will do you a good deed in return. Then the young girl walked on her way until she came across a broken down well. Where are you going? I journey to find work. Please come here and make me tidy and clean and I will do you a good deed in return. So the young girl did as she was bid and bailed the stale water out of the well and walked on her way until she met a tiny dog. And the dog said, Please wash me, brush me and trim me and I will do you a good deal in return. The young girl cleaned and trimmed the dog and the dog thanked her and she walked on her way until she saw a beautiful house. There were fairies living in the house. The fairies asked the purpose of her journey and so the young girl told them. Then the fairies said, why don't you stay here and become our servant? There are seven rooms. You have to sweep out six rooms every day, but you must never go to the seventh room. So the young girl worked for a year and a day, and at the end of the year, the young girl said, I would like to leave now and go home to show my parents what I've earned. You have been a faithful maid, the fairy said. You did as you were told, so now we will tell you what you have earned. Come here and lie down atop these gold coins. Roll over and whatever sticks to you is yours. And now go and roll over on the silver coins and whatever sticks to you is yours. The girl did as she was told, then stood up and bid farewell to the fairies. On her way home she came across the little dog again that said, Come here and take as many pearls as you wish. The dog was covered in pearls and the young girl took the pearls and hung them around her neck. She walked on her way until she reached the well again, where jugs hung so that people could drink from its sweet water. The young girl was thirsty and so she took a drink and walked on her way. When she reached the oven again, she noticed it was filled with bread and cake and the oven said, Come here and eat your fill in return for your good deed. She ate as much as she could, packed more to take home, and then walked on her way. Next she reached the grapevine that hung heavy with ripe fruit. So here the girl stopped and ate and drank as much as she could. Then the girl walked on her way again until she came to the pear tree and the pear tree said, I've been waiting for you as all my pears are ripe. 
As the girl neared home, the cockerel crowed to announce her arrival. Cock-a-doodle-doo, my mistress is coming home covered in silver and gold. The young girl heard the cockerel's call and ran home to bring joy at last to her old father. Cock-a-doodle-doo, my mistress is coming home covered in silver and gold. The old woman shouted, be quiet. That's not true. Once again, the cockerel said, Cock-a-doodle-doo, my mistress is coming home covered in silver and gold. The old woman said, You've earned very nicely indeed, but now my own daughter will go forth and work for a rich family, and she will earn a great deal more than you've managed. When the old woman's daughter reached the pear tree, it said, Come here and rid me of my dry branches, and I will do you a good deal in return. The girl said, I will not ruin my pretty white hands and my lovely tiny feet, no matter what happens. When the girl reached the grapevine, it asked her to hoe its roots and to expect a good deal in return. But once again, the girl refused to do anything that might ruin her pretty white hands and her lovely tiny feet, no matter what happened. Next, she reached the oven. The oven asked her to repair it and it would do her a good deed in return. But the girl said she would not ruin her pretty white hands and her lovely tiny feet with disgusting mud and clay no matter what happened. Next she came to the broken down well. Please come here and make me tidy and clean. But again she refused to dirty her pretty white hands and her lovely tiny feet no matter what happened. Then she met the little dog that said, come here and trim me. But she refused to touch the dog because she would not dirty her pretty white hands and her lovely tiny feet no matter what happened. Next she reached the beautiful big house and asked that she be allowed to sleep there for the night. The fairies living there asked her where she was going and so she told them. In reply they asked her to stay and work as their maid. They said, here there are six rooms and you must sweep them every day, but you must never enter the seventh room. The girl did as she was told and swept the six rooms every day and ignored the seventh. But after a while, her curiosity forced her to open the door to the seventh room. To her horror, she saw that it was filled with frogs and snakes and they bit her and stung her so terribly that by the time she managed to escape, she was covered in blood. And so she left the fairy's house with no payment at all. On her way home, she met the dog and went up to ask for some pearls. The dog said, you refuse to help me and now I refuse to help you. The girl reached the well and was very thirsty but was not allowed to drink. When she reached the oven, it was packed with fresh bread and cakes, but she could not eat any of them because when she reached inside for some, it burned her hands terribly. When she reached the grapevine, she tried to pick a bunch of grapes and to drink a glass of wine, but the grapevine pushed her hand away. And when she reached the pear tree, she could not pick a single pear. As she neared home, the cockerel caught sight of her and flew to the top of the fence and let it be known to everyone that, cock-a-doodle-doo, my mistress is coming all covered in blood. The old woman went to the fence and said, that's not true, she's covered in gold. But the cockerel repeated, cock-a-doodle-doo, my mistress is coming all covered in blood. The old woman said, that's not true, because she's covered in gold. The cockerel repeated, cock-a-doodle-doo, here comes my mistress all covered in blood. That's not true, that's not true, shouted the old lady. But the old man said, now you can see that my daughter earned more as a maid than yours ever did. This led to such a quarrel that the old woman and her daughter left the old man's home. Then the old man and his daughter lived happily ever after.
Hungarian folk tales. The Shepherd and the Snake. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there lived a poor shepherd boy. The only thing the shepherd boy possessed was a little donkey, and he spent his days guarding the mayor's flock of sheep. He sat watching the flock one day and thinking how unfair it was that some people had money and were rich, while others had none and were poor. He sat thinking and thinking when he suddenly heard the sound of crying. Help me! Help me! The boy followed the sound of crying and walked to a hole in the ground where he came upon a yellow-bellied snake wriggling in a fire. Help me, shepherd boy, and I will soon repay the favour. So the boy held out his stick and the yellow-bellied snake slithered up it and out of the fiery flames. Then the snake said, Follow me and you should know that my father is the king of all snakes. The yellow-bellied snake slithered along and the young shepherd walked quickly behind. He left his donkey to watch over the sheep. The boy followed the snake until they found themselves in a forest, where the yellow-bellied snake suddenly slithered under a flat stone. The snake shouted back, Push the stone away and follow me. The young shepherd did as the snake had said and revealed steps going down into the ground. And he walked down and down and down until he arrived in a beautiful diamond meadow. This is my father's palace. And the gate to the palace was guarded by two very large snakes. There the yellow-bellied snake slithered in and the young shepherd followed close behind. They passed through one room after the other until they arrived at the throne room that sparkled with silver and gems. The walls were studded with diamonds and everything was decorated in precious metal. The snake king was sitting proudly on an enormous throne and when he wanted to give his servants an order, he would simply flick his tail and bells would ring. Then the yellow-bellied snake hurried up to the king and embraced him. Father dear, don't harm this poor shepherd boy because he saved me from the fire. Now, young shepherd boy, you may choose from two things as your reward for saving my son. You can learn to speak to all the animals, or I can give you a bag of gold. The poor shepherd boy thought hard because he was sorely tempted by the promise of riches, but he would never ever have the chance to learn the language of the animals again. And so that is what he chose. Come here, my child, said the snake king. So the young shepherd boy approached the fearsome snake and the king hissed in his ear and he instantly understood what the king was saying to his snake's son. So then the poor shepherd boy bid farewell to the yellow-bellied snake and his father the king and started to walk back the way he had come. He walked on until he came to the beautiful meadow, climbed back up the underground steps and re-emerged into his own world once more. Then he herded his sheep up and sat down to reflect on all that had happened to him that day. And as he sat there, two tiny birds flew up and landed in the top of a tree where they sat talking to each other. Did you know, if that poor shepherd boy only knew what lies at the foot of this tree, he would not stay poor for one day more. But the young shepherd heard this and understood all they said. So he swiftly drove his sheep back to their owner, picked up his sharpest axe and walked back to the forest to the tree where he had sat.
and he dug and he dug until he discovered, to his great delight, a big pot of gold. As evening fell, he took the gold home and never had to watch the mayor's sheep again. Then he soon bought a beautiful house with plenty of land, married his bride, and they both lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, in a tiny village, there lived an old woman who never had a child of her own. And she was once overheard saying that she would not really care if God gave her a puppy, just as long as she had a young one to raise. The years went by and the woman eventually gave birth to a baby. But it was actually a baby pig. And it was only then she remembered what she had said about God giving her a baby to raise. But what could she do? Now she had a pink pig, and it was her duty to raise it as best she could. Women of the village would gather in the day and gossip, and the pink pig would always sit with its mother and chuckle happily to itself. Let me tell you that the reason your little pink pig squeals so is that it wants to go to school with the other boys and girls in the village. Please don't mock me so, the mother of the pink pig said, who felt sadly ashamed to have such a child. But the rest of the women nagged her and nagged her until she eventually sent the pink pig to school in the village. And there the pink pig continued to squeal for the teacher until she threw a book at the pink pig to silence it. The pink pig's nose moved from letter to letter until it eventually learned to read like the other children. One day the children all went off to pick strawberries and the pink pig wanted to join them, but its mother wouldn't let it go. But the neighbours nagged her and nagged her until she eventually agreed. And as the other children all carried baskets, the pink pig wanted one too, and so its mother hung a little basket on its snout. The boy who lived next door was exactly the same age as the little pink pig, and his mother told him to take very good care of the pig that afternoon. Then the pink pig lagged behind the others on their way and it slipped out of its pig skin. And when it took it off, it was plain for all the world to see that the pink pig was the most beautiful little girl in the land. The pretty little girl quickly filled her basket and then slipped her pigskin back on and went to join the others. The boy next door saw all of this, but he did not say a word. All the children's parents began to worry about their offspring, and so they stood out on the road as they waited for them to come home. Look, the pink pig has bought strawberries too. Who could have filled its basket? 
The pink pig, the boy said, but he said nothing more of what he had seen. When the children grew up, the boys began to court the girls. And the boy next door went to see the pink pig. His father and mother watched forlornly and wondered what their son wanted from such an ugly beast. But the boy next door never gave up, and he only ever visited the pink pig. At last the time came to marry for the boy next door. Whom will you marry, son? Why, the pink pig, of course. Don't shame us, son. We are old and respected, so don't discredit us now. But his father could clearly see that the boy next door was determined to make the pink pig his bride for life. So he gathered his friends together and went to ask for the pig's hand in marriage. Sadly, my son will never get married if the pink pig refuses his request. The peculiar couple were engaged to be married for some time, and people gathered from far and near to witness their wedding, as it was not every day that a man married a pig. After the wedding feast, the young couple went up to the loft as was the custom. The boy next door had told his mother everything, and he had also told her to take good care and burn the pigskin when they threw it down. The band played when the young couple went up to the loft, and it played when they came down again. The pink pig had gone, and a beautiful girl appeared in its place. Everyone was bewildered by the beauty of the girl, who had once been a pink pig. And that is the end of the pink pig's curly tail.